Hey medicals welcome back. Thank you for joining me today for this special lecture on the radiological aspect of head trauma. In this presentation we will embark on a journey through the fascinating world of radiology exploring various imaging modalities and their crucial role in the diagnosis and treatment of a head injury. To make this lecture engaging I will weave a story that showcase the impact of radiology in the life of patient named Sara so this lecture is very important for your pg preparation whether you are preparing for neat pg inict or next pg but yes you must know about it let's begin so our story begins with sara a vibrant young woman who unfortunately experienced a severe head injury due to a car accident she is rushed to a emergency department unconscious in critical condition the first step in diagnosing her injuries involves the use of vital radiological tool and the first tool is yes non contrast ct so here yeah, in head trauma investigation of choice and we can say initial investigation is yes ncct so yeah there are few exceptions we know that sara had severe head injury but in ct scan if we find there is a normal finding or there is few hyperdense foci that is because of petechial hemorrhage so yeah if there is diffuse axonal injury then mri is the investigation of choice and in which we can see the blooming foci look over here here is the diffuse axonal injury and here we have the blooming foci so this is the important question now gets back to our story so we did ncct for sara and here we have the image now look over here here is the biconvex or we can see the lens shaped hematoma and this is because of the significant trauma or underlying fracture so let's talk about the extradural hemorrhage so extradural hemorrhage it is most commonly caused by arteries and commonly it is caused by middle meningeal artery now look over here here it is the biconvex and lens shaped hematoma and because of significant trauma underlying fracture but yeah between the unconsciousness she was conscious for temporary period so it is called as the lucid interval now what is lucid interval and is it important yes it is important to note that the lucid interval is a dangerous phase because it can gives a false sense of reassurance to both the injured person and healthcare providers so the individual may feel fine and not seek a medical attention but yeah lucid interval is often associated with epidural hematomas which occurs when bleeding accumulates between the skull and the outermost layer of the brain called the dura mater so initially the bleeding may not cause immediate symptoms but as the hematoma expands it puts pressure on the brain and yes it can leads to a rapid decline in neurological function so this is the lucid interval so it is present in extradural hematoma and most common site for extradural hematoma is squamous temporal bone and note that it is a hematoma which do not cross the suture line but in 10% cases suture fracture where it may cross and yes this hematoma can cross the midline but as a healthcare expert we must know about different types of hematomas so let's start about one by one and yes it is important for your neat pg preparation your inict preparation or your next pg preparation now if sara is present with this type of hematoma then what do you call and what is your diagnosis so yeah this hematoma is seems like it is in the ventricle so it is inside the ventricle and yes this is associated with intraparenchymal and subarachnoid hemorrhage only now, what is the main source of this hemorrhage so yes it is can be due to the arterial or it can be due to venous now it conforms to the ventricular shape because yes it is a intraventricular hemorrhage and can be present with acute sudden onset headache or nausea or vomiting so this is the intraventricular hemorrhage now look over here here we have the intraparenchymal hemorrhage so it is inside of the brain parenchyma and it is 
due due to the mechanism of increased blood pressure so it can be due to the trauma or arterial venous malformation and the source is same as that of intraventricular that is atrial or venous and you can see he that here the shape is yes rounded so intraparenchymal hemorrhage are commonly rounded and the symptoms are also the same that is sudden onset nausea headache and vomiting now let's talk about the subarachnoid and subdural hemorrhage and we already talk about the epidural one so let's talk about it so subarachnoid hemorrhage it is between the arachnoid and pia mater okay so here you can see that here we have the arachnoid hemorrhage the shape is it is track along the sulci and the feces if sara is present with subarachnoid hemorrhage she might tell you ki she is having worst headache of her life so this is the presentation worst headache of her life so this is the acute presentation right and the source of this subarachnoid hemorrhage is arterial more than venous and it is because of rupture of aneurysm or because of av malformation now this is the subdural hemorrhage and look over here so this is between the dura mater and the arachnoid space it is occur because of the trauma and the bleeding source is yes venous and the bridging veins now the shape we can see that this is the crescent shape and the presentation is there is a history of worsening headache now what is the difference between the subdural hemorrhage and epidural hemorrhage can you see here here we can see that it is a crescent shape okay so i said crescent means subdural while epidural is looks like the yes it is a lentiform or we can say the convex shaped so how can we remember this so you can remember this by a mnemonic and the mnemonic is subdural hematoma start with s and here we can see that this is the yes and it is like a c shaped or we can say the crescent shape while look over here this is the epidural hematoma and epidural hematoma if we join this so it is looks like a convex so it is a convex or we can say the lens shaped so this all are the consequences of the head trauma but don't forget our clock is ticking and for sara neurosurgeon urgently prepare for a life saving procedure sara is whisked away to the operating room where they performed a craniotomy to remove the clots and repair the damaged artery through the guidance of intraoperative imaging the surgeon successfully restored the normal blood flow and relieved the mounting pressure on sara's brain following the surgery sara enters a period of intensive care and rehabilitation frequent imaging including ct scan and mri helps monitoring this process ensuring that there are no complications or residual effects from the injury with the time dedication and support from her healthcare team sara embarks on the long but hopefully journey of recovery so as medical professionals it's our duty to stay vigilant using the power of radiology and imaging technologies to unmask the silent threats that lie within through early detection appropriate intervention we can rewrite the story of those affected by extradural hemorrhage offering them a chance at recovery and a brighter future so this is all about the head trauma and thanks for watching this video yes this video is very important for your next pg preparation your neat pg preparation as well as inct preparation so stay tuned for the next one and if you want you can yes subscribe my channel